KSJE and the Farmington Public Library present Quinto's Hana and Tales. Hello, my name is Ray and I'm with the Farmington Public Library. Today I will be doing stories on fractured fairy tales with animals. The first book I'm going to read is called Dino Duckling by Allison Murray. Even as an egg, Dino Duckling was different. Dino Duckling started out big, and then he grew, and grew, and grew. Sometimes Dino Duckling couldn't help feeling different, but Mama Duck always said, Big and wide, sleek and slim, we're a family, and we all fit in. Different didn't make any difference to her. As spring turned to summer, Mama Duck taught her babies everything they needed to know. How to swim, how to fish, how to share, how to navigate by the stars, and how to look out for one another. But most importantly, she taught them how to celebrate their differences. Sadly, not everyone thought Dino Duckling belonged. Sometimes, Different was difficult. But Mama Duck just gathered her babies close and told them, Scales or feather, big or small, we're a family and there's room for us all. Summer turned to autumn and soon it was time to fly south to the sunshine. Dino Duckling ran. He jumped and flapped. But it was no good. Try as he might, he simply couldn't fly. Differences does matter, thought Dino Duckling sadly. As the leaves blew all around him, Dino Duckling lay down in the reeds and wept. He imagined his family far away. But when he opened his eyes, Dino Duckling got a big surprise. He saw one... Two, three, four faces he recognized. They were all there, the whole family. We would never leave without you, said Mama Duck. Fly or not, it's all okay. We're a family, so we'll find a way. And they did. The end. That book was called Dino Duckling. By Allison Murray. The next book I'm going to read is called Fairy Tale Pets by Tracy Corduroy. Bob lived on a nice, neat hill in a nice, neat house with neat roses. His dog, named Rex, was friendly and smart, and he was very quiet and neat for a dog. Their life was perfectly neat and fine except they were very, very poor. I need to find a job, said Bob. But what could I do? Then Bob remembered he loved animals, and the neighborhood was full of animals. That's it! I'll take care of pets, he cried. Easy! So that night, Bob and Rex pulled up, put up posters all around town, And they said, Need help with your pets? Then Bob and Rex are here for you. We walk dogs. We cat sit. We house hamsters. No pet too big or too small. Come to the house on the hill. All ready, said Bob the next day. When, ding dong, the first pet arrived. Hi, beamed a little golden-haired girl. Could you please take care of my baby bear while I'm on vacation? Uh, a a, a bear? Galt Bob. Um, uh, uh, he'd been expecting hamsters and bunnies. Don't worry, said the girl. He's such a little sweetheart. And waving goodbye, she skipped away, but then the little sweetheart found his voice. Someone's been eating my porridge! Someone's been sitting on my chair. 
and someone has been sleeping in my bed. Um, n no, stuttered Bob. Th that's Rex's bed. But in jumped the bear and crack. Uh, oh my, cried Bob, staring at the mess. But the bear didn't care because now he had a splinter. Wah! cried the bear. No sooner had Bob gotten the splinter out when... Ding-dong! Another pet arrived. Howdy, I'm Jack, said a boy at the door. Can you please take care of Gabby, my goose? Phew, smiled Bob, much easier than the bear. Jack took some some beans from his pocket. Take these in return, he said. Beans? asked Bob as he took the goose in. Now where should we put her, he wondered. But Gabby soon found the perfect spot for her nest. Someone's been sitting on my head, grumbled Baby Bear, and she's still there. Look! Don't worry, gasped Bob. We'll get her down. But the goose did not want to be moved. She fluttered and flapped. She pecked and squawked. Then suddenly, out popped a big, heavy egg. Crash! Oh, good heavens, exclaimed Bob. Too noisy, cried Baby Bear. Wah! Poor Rex had barely cleaned things up when... Ding-dong! No more pets, groaned Bob with a heavy sigh. He opened the door to see a rather green lady glaring back. Here, she said in a growly voice, take these nice, quiet billy goats. No, wait, pleaded Bob. We don't have room for all three. But the goats were already inside. Trip, trap, trip, trap, went their clunky hooves, tipping over teapot trampling over tables and ow they stepped on my toes squealed baby bear Wah! what a ruckus thought bob shh whispered bob or you'll scare the goose but it was too late honk gabby hooted and out trembled several more eggs they thumped and bumped and bashed and crashed no! Well, Bob, the house was a wreck. That's it. No more pets. But just when Bob thought that things couldn't get any worse, three little pigs skipped up to the house. Our, um, puppy needs a walk, the leader cried. He's really friendly, honest. Bob looked at the puppy. It was positively huge. I I'm sorry, we're full. He exclaimed, but the puppy just opened its big wolfy mouth, mouth full of big, sharp, wolfy teeth, then huff, and it puffed, and it blew the house down. Me, wah! honk, honk, honk. Oh, Rex, grasped Bob. I'm done with pet sitting. The problem was, what else could he do? Then out of his pocket fell one of Jack's beans. That's it. I'll be a gardener, Bob decided, planting all the beans at once. Soon they would grow. Then he sell them at the market, and he and Rex would live happily ever after. Hooray, cheered Bob with a great big smile. What could possibly go wrong? The end. And that book was called Fairy Tale Pets by Tracy Corduroy. The next book I'm going to read is called Panderella. And it's from the series called Animal Fairy Tales. And this is written by Charlotte Gullion. Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful panda called Panderella. She lived with her stepmother and two stepsisters. They were very unkind and made her do all the work in the house. One day, a messenger brought an invitation from the royal palace. The prince had invited them all to a ball, but the stepsisters told Panderella she could not go. 
Panderella's stepmother and stepsisters got dressed up and went to the ball. When they had gone, Panderella sat down and began to cry. Suddenly, there was a flash of light and her furry godmother appeared. Don't cry, Panderella, said the furry godmother. You shall go to the ball. She waved her magic wand, and suddenly Panderella was wearing a beautiful dress and a delicate glass slippers. The furry godmother waved her wand again, and a carriage and horses appeared. They were ready to take Panderella to the ball. Make sure you come home before the clock strikes midnight, she warned Panderella. When Panderella got to the ball, the prince couldn't take his eyes off her. They danced together for hours. Suddenly, the clock began to chime midnight. The magic was about to wear off. Panderella ran away as fast as she could, but as soon as one of her glass slippers fell to the ground, the prince picked up the slippers. He didn't know who Panderella was, but he knew the slippers would fit her. He decided to search the land until he found her. Before long, the prince search took him to Panderella's house. Her stepsisters tried to cram their paw into the slipper, but they were the wrong shape. Then, the prince spotted Panderella and he asked her to try on the slippers, and they fit perfectly. The prince and Panderella went to the palace where they were married. Panderella never had to work for her stepsisters again. And she lived happily ever after. The end. And that was called Panderella by Charlotte Gullion. The next book I'm going to read is called Little Red and the Very Hungry Lion. One hot morning, Auntie Rosie woke up covered in spots. There was only one thing for them, spot medicine. Oh dear, oh dear, said Little Red when she heard the news. I'll come right away. So she put so she put some spot medicine in her basket and waved goodbye to her daddy. It was a long way to Aunt Rosie's house. Little Red walked under the giraffes, over the sleepy crocodiles, and past the chattering monkeys. She crept around the termite mound and under the leaping Godzilla, and then she caught a ride on an elephant, wiggled her way around the hippos and the warthogs, and waved hello to the meerkats. Then she sat down in the shade of a shady tree, and that's when the lion arrived, the very hungry lion. Oh, hello, purred the lion. Where are you going? Oh, to visit my auntie who is covered in spots, said Little Red. In the time it took for his tummy to rumble, the very hungry lion had cooked up a very naughty plan. My very clever plan. Number one, sneak off to Auntie Rosie's house. Number two, hide in her cabinet. Three, Dress up as Auntie Rosie. Four, wait for a bit. Five, jump up and eat Little Red. Six, eat Aunt Auntie Rosie for dessert. Well done. You are a very clever lion. And he rushed off to put his plan into action. When he arrived, the very hungry lion stuffed Auntie Rosie in a cabinet and locked the door. Then he squeezed himself into one of her nightgown and covered himself all over in spots. Of course, when Little Red arrived, she realized right away it wasn't Auntie Rosie sitting in the bed. She quickly looked around and spotted her auntie peeking through a gap in the cabinet. Then Little Red decided that she was going to teach the naughty lion a lesson. Oh, Auntie, cried the Little Red, what tangled hair you have. And before the very hungry lion could even lick his lips, Little Red had brushed 
and combed and twisted and braided until a, the lion had a lovely new look. This had not been part of the lion's plan. So, he opened his mouth wide. Disgusting! shouted Little Red. What gigantic teeth you have, Auntie! And Little Red made the very hungry lion brush, brush, brush his teeth until they sparkled. Oh, Auntie, sighed Little Red, what an old nightgown you are wearing. And before the very hungry lion knew it, Little Red had found a much prettier dress for him to wear. This had not been part of the lion's plan either. Stop! yelled the lion. I am a very hungry lion, and my tummy is grumbling. Little Red pointed her finger. Well, trying to eat children and aunties is a very naughty. If you were hungry, all you had to do was ask for some food. The very hungry lion let Auntie Rosie out of the cabinet and said sorry ever so politely. Little Red gave Auntie Rosie the spot medicine, which worked immediately. Then the three of them gobbled up a whole basket of doughnuts together. The lion had five. Soon it was beginning to get dark, so the lion walked all the way back home with Little Red. On his very best behavior, he promised to never, ever, ever try to eat another auntie or any children. But he might be tempted to eat daddy. No, bad kitty, said Little Red. The end. And that was called Little Red and the Very Hungry Lion. The last book I'm going to read is called The Poodle and the Pea. Again, this is an animal fairy tale by Charlotte Gullion. Once upon a time, a king and a queen lived in a fine palace. They had one son, Prince Barking. One day, the king and queen told Prince Barking it was time for him to get married. Many princesses came to the palace to meet the prince, but the prince didn't want to marry any of them. That night, a young princess was lost in the forest near the palace. She was cold, tired, and scared. At last, she stumbled out of the forest and saw the palace. She knocked on the door. A servant led her in and took her to the king and queen. She thanked them and she told them she was a lost princess. The king and queen didn't believe anyone so dirty and that that could be a princess, but the prince liked her. Then the servant had an idea. The servant put a pea in the bed and piled blankets on top. Let her sleep in the blanket basket tonight, he said. In the morning... We will know if she is truly a princess. The princess, very tired, climbed to the top of the blanket. Then she curled up and tried to sleep. When the morning came, the princess hadn't slept at all. She complained that her bed had been very lumpy. Aha, said the king. Only a real princess could fill a pea under all those blankets. Prince Barking was delighted. He asked the princess to marry him, and at their wedding feast, there were piles of peas for everyone. The end. Again, the books that I have read today. The first one was called Dino Duckling by Allison Murray. The second one's Fairy Tale Pets by Tracy Corduroy. The third one is Panderella by Charlotte Gullion. And then I read Little Red and the Very Hungry Lion by Alex Smith, and the last book I read was called The Poodle and the Pea by Charlotte Golian. And for more information and programs, visit our website at www.infoway.org. Thank you. This has been Quinto's Hana and Tales, presented by the Farmington Public Library and KSJE 90.9 FM.